Dimitri, thank you for your time. I know you're very busy with this incident. Um, I'd like to know, what are people saying there? What are, what are the impressions of people uh, after this, you know, obvious attack uh, on uh, an attempted decapitation of the government is what it appears to be? Well, strangely, people are not surprised, you know, and uh, there was no panic, maybe because the video was released several hours after the incident so people knew that uh, it, it's not live it's not happening now uh, somehow uh, it uh, you know nothing terrible happened but basically something terrible has happened because uh, uh, let me tell you that the Kremlin even uh, from the cultural point of view it's a fortress that was uh, created in the end of the 15th century. Can you imagine? You know, yes, yeah. this is absolutely an absolutely priceless object. It was not uh, destroyed even by Napoleon. You know, even though he was very, very uncivilized yes. when he came to Moscow and he destroyed a lot of cultural objects. It was terrible in that sense. But uh, since then, uh, you know, uh, no substantial damage has been done to that uh, uh, medieval fortress. The Bolsheviks did some damage 100 years ago, but uh, OK, we understand what kind of people they were. And now suddenly this terrible, you know, this pair of drones, uh, you know, uh, immediately the Ukrainian government and the Western media started uh, playing the tune that it was all staged, that it was all a provocation, as if Russians could not find some uh, less uh, precious objects to make provocations about, and as if we needed provocation for provocation for what? <laughs> you know, provocation for uh, attacking. You know, it's the Ukrainian forces that are going to attack most likely in in the next few days. That's what we hear from the Western media, from Ukrainian media. We have been hearing from Ukrainian government for several months. And uh, basically, I would like to take it in a larger context. Uh, I'm not going to guess who did it, you know, Zelensky himself, or maybe some group of Ukrainian nationalists uh, that acted, uh, uh, you know, independently of him, which is possible. Maybe. Let me remind you that the public in the United States probably forgot it, but uh, uh, both Poroshenko and, and Zelensky especially in the beginning of their terms, uh, they talked about compromise, they talked about peace in the east of Ukraine. But whenever they, they uh, you know, they made an attempt to discuss it, even to discuss it in the parliament, there were terrible acts of violence, uh, demonstrations, policemen were killed, uh, not many of them as, uh, you know, when they ousted that uh, the legally elected president in 2014, with U.S. support, by the way, but yeah. still, you know, just uh, read the news, you'll see two policemen killed in a rally against Zelensky's prison, you know. And and uh, so basically there are many groups besides uh, Zelensky which are capable of anything, you know. Mm. And, uh, and uh, what, what troubles me is that uh, almost no one in the world uh, is... Uh, is uh, determined to take it seriously, have the guts to take it seriously. I mean, the only person that I heard who was more or less sensible was uh, Robert Kennedy Jr., who said uh, something like, imagine what would happen if a group supported by Russia uh, attempted to fly a drone and explode it over the Capitol Hill, right? What would be the reaction? Well, we saw what happened when some guys just walked into the Capitol and walked through it, with, you know, wearing horns and stuff. They've been chasing them now for four years, three years. <laughs> well, just today, I must, um, I may, I may surprise you, but just today they announced uh, that they found guilty, you know, uh, four people from the Proud Boys, uh, and and they can fa face a sentence of up to fifty years yeah. because they were there. Uh, let me remind you that actually the so-called Maidan, which ousted the legally elected president Yanukovych and which killed 38 policemen, these people were supported by the United States and the European Union. They did exactly the same thing, even worse yeah. uh, than uh, taking the Capitol Hill by storm, as it was the case on the 6th of January 2021. But these people were not persecuted in any way. <laughs> the United States declared them heroes. And now 
how they form the bulk of the government, you know. So uh, the, the, I, I just deliberately, I look through all the newspapers in the United States, in Britain. Is anyone talking about Robert Kennedy Jr. as uh, Robert Kennedy Jr. as a candidate for the U.S. election? No one. Only right. the Financial Times a few weeks ago mentioned him as some kind of anti-vaccine activist, you know, right. which right. is probably the most controversial part of his biography. Right. Uh, but uh, indeed, uh, I'm kind of uh, terrified because the West, uh, I mean, if that doesn't impress the West, how can the West be impressed? I mean, how can it be uh, persuaded to show some sign of objectivity in this situation? We only hear the idiotic Mr. Trump, you know, who says, if I were in power, I would resolve uh, the problem. I would stop the virus in 24 hours, you know, and then he lied saying that uh, I got along very well with Putin. Yes, you expelled the record number of Russian diplomats from the United States, bigger than even Obama, you know, and you sent lethal weapons to Ukraine. You got along very well with Putin, right? And, and then he says, I got along also very well with Xi Jinping and with uh, Kim Jong-un. Yes, you imposed the strictest possible sanctions against North Korea, right. starving people, you know, and, and you, you say you got Someone very well with him, you know. Uh, it, it's just uh, such a, a desperate situation when you have either this uh, uh, muttering old idiot Biden, or, or you have that liar named Trump. You know, it's uh, isn't that a terrible situation? Whom can we hope on? And then we have DeSantis, who before even the electoral campaign insulted Putin. Putin, of course, pretended not to notice. Uh, they, they, they keep saying that he is vindictive, you know, he never forgives uh, uh, any insults. No, Putin has been, uh, has been very patient. I mean, unfortunately, that is his style. He is very patient until a certain moment when it just gets unbearable. And then he makes a sudden move. And then the West says, oh, we're so surprised. We didn't expect it. It's an aggression, you know. Right. Just uh, a few days ago, I read it in, in Der Spiegel magazine in German. Uh, the, the Germans interviewed uh, Angela Stent, and, and she was the foreign policy advisor of uh, George Bush the Jr. in some kind of very important office. She taught at Georgetown University, and she visited a number of Valdai Club discussions. And, and they asked her, don't you think that Putin reacted to NATO's expansion? And she said, no, I don't believe so. In 2004, we expanded NATO to the Baltics, and he did react. Jesus, you know, just look, look at any newspapers, the Western ones, the Eastern ones, look at the site of the Russian foreign ministry. Russia protested vehemently against the expansion of uh, NATO to the Baltics. We just didn't wage a war because uh, we thought, you know, it was not worth it and uh, that there are sensible people in the West. But Russia protested and she doesn't remember it. Right. He says he didn't object, you know, Putin didn't object because the only way you, you can object so that she notices is by waging a war. She doesn't notice uh, diplomatic protests. She doesn't notice articles. She doesn't notice Putin's speeches. And she could talk to Putin for hours, you know, the, the Bavaldai people, they could talk to him for hours. Yeah. And still she lies, you know, and still she doesn't. Uh, react, you know, when, when she is spoken to in human language. She only reacts when the, some kind of military action is started. So these people are absolutely hopeless. And uh, unfortunately, the, the story with the drone attack against the Kremlin, if they're not impressed, that means they're just dumb. That's they they are just not sensitive. Not, 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 not only they're stupid, they're also not sensitive in terms of, uh, in terms of normal human emotions. Yeah, I think you're right. A little political empathy might uh, be very useful at this moment in history. Thank you very much for your time, Dimitri. I hope to speak with you again soon. Only nine minutes, but I hope we, we did something. <laughs> okay. Thank you.